This is it, the last long box, the very last long box I have. Got two little, well actually no saying that, I've got like a, a crappy long box full of like junkers to be honest. Uh, just stuff I should have sold ages ago I think. And uh, got a couple of little uh, boxes, but not like proper boxes. But anyway, let's just show you what I've got. That's his action. I don't know why it says it at the back though. So there's nothing on that side to be action. Uh, Bloodlines, cool. Uh, Firebrand, Black Condor, Fighting American, and Valor. Hmm, okay, I can't remember. Well, that's it, that's what it says on here. Let's go through it and see what I have. Alright, starting off, got some Atom. So, uh, yeah, this could be my Atom run. I'm sure I've got a few Atom comics. So, just to see uh, one off, the world. Oh, this is one of the, the Julius uh, Swartz specials just after Julius Swartz died. They did a load of specials. And this is obviously the Atom one. Julie Swartz tribute. Yeah, cool. Right. Then we have a special Sword of the Atom. This is when he joined a, uh, like a, an Amazon society kind of thing. That's number three, that one. Uh, number two, Sword of Atom special. 1985. And uh, number one, Sword of Atom special. I don't know what I, I've done those in backwards order. Right, then we've got a, a run called Power of the Atom. He's back and more powerful than ever in his first monthly adventure. These are from 88. Ray Palmer, the Atom. Uh, <laughs> care to comment on the battle so far, Mr. Strobe? Mr. Atom, a comment for our viewers, please. <laughs> Fine. All right, here he is, teaming up with Hawkman, Hawkwoman. Of course, Atom and Hawkman uh, had a comic together at one point. I think it was I think it was Atom comic, but Hawkman had a backstory or something like that, or the other way around. It was a Hawkman comic. Oh, number seven is missing. Power of the Atom Seven. I do not have it. So that's his one to add to the the must be picked up file. That's his what my plan is with my comics from now on. Getting rid of the dross, the stuff that I am not that bothered about ever reading again, and replacing it with. Good stuff, <laughs> like the missing comics from like from you know runs and that kind of thing, and uh, you know sometimes I've got like only one or two of a, of a run, and they would be like, well, this would be nice to fill out or to you know to get a significant portion of it. Obviously, stuff like X uh, X Men, Iron Man, Four, that kind of thing. I'm not gonna be able to get the bloody well full runs of those ever, uh, simply because they cost so bloody much. But I can get like a like a nice run together, like a full run, like maybe I'll go to whatever my first comic is and work from my first one to the last one of that run. Um, yeah, depending if it's good. I mean, Marvel got to a certain point where I just started hating all their comics, so I'll make sure I don't bother collecting those ones. But during the period when I thought they were cool, I will collect the runs during that time. <clears throat> right, so that was the end of The Power of the Atom. And now we have a, a special of The Atom. Steve Dillon Art, special number one, special number two, and Boland on this one, a bit of Boland art. Right, right a four-parter of the Metal Men. There we go. I just thought, Metal Rog, Metal Rog's a fan of the Metal Men, and his name's Roger, so Roger's obviously short for Roger, so Metal Rog. I was thinking, wondering maybe if the beginning of his name was from the Metal Men, because he know he likes the Metal Men, but maybe he didn't want to go with Metal Rog, <laughs> so he went for Metal Rog. I don't know, maybe it's a Portman 2 of Metal and Roger. <laughs> it's possible. It was six part mini story, Xeno Brood, actually seven parts because there's a zero on there as well. I can't quite remember how they were, there's some kind of like alien pod or something landed on Earth and I can't remember what happened. These people came out of the alien pod, or they were somehow um, uh, changed by the alien pod. I can't remember now. But uh, yeah, Xenobrood, I suppose it's pronounced. Xenomorphs or something like that. 
But yeah, they, were, they weren't too bad. Uh, that was it. I don't think they ever went any further than this. I don't know if they were ever killed off or appeared anywhere else in the DC Universe. Got a couple of runs of this uh, DC Helix title, Bloody Mary. Because it's uh, Garth Ennis, is always a writer I've enjoyed. And Carlos Esquera, who has been one of my favourite artists of all time. So yeah, I had to pick those up. So I've got two, I think two four-parters of Bloody Mary. It was kind of a set in the future. And she was a badass. Can't remember much about her character. I'm assuming she was a nun at some point. Uh, did she? Did she have some kind of bug, kind of like a worm? Some kind of was that? It was one of the storylines that gave her like immortality. So she had some kind of symbiotic uh, thing inside her that healed all her wounds. Uh, or that was a storyline at one point. I'm not sure if it was she that had it or that was another story. But yes, yeah, um, it was interesting. It's like in a, a post-World War kind of world. But I always enjoyed Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And there was a free book DC run based on it. There you go. Arthur Dent's a bit younger than I would have pictured him to have been, but I don't know. <laughs> I suppose I picture him more like the years in the BBC uh, series of the Hitchhiker's Guide. Right, I actually saw one of these comics going for 50p the other day, yesterday, and I nearly picked it up. And I was like, maybe I've got this. Maybe I've already got this. I don't remember. I mean, I quite like the Phantom Stranger character. I haven't got an awful lot of his comics or anything, but, you know... I think this is the one I nearly picked up and I've, I already had it. <laughs> so I'm glad I didn't waste another 50p on a comic I already had. Because that's, uh, that's quite annoying when you do that. This is another character I like. Wild Dog. This is Wild Dog. I've got two of these. I've got one of these framed in my bedroom. Up on my comic shelves. Just think that's a really cool cover. I just like, I just like the look of him. It was kind of like DC's Punisher. But uh, not quite so OP as Punisher is. Um... There you go. It's been a while since I've read it, but I'm sure it was like a mystery. You are Wild Dog. This is Wild Dog. It's like, who is Wild Dog? And I think there was like four old uh, school friends. And I can't remember what the story was now. But anyway, it's a, a Return of Wild Dog special. I liked his little web chest emblem as well. It was like based, I think it was the, um, I imagine it was the hockey team, his local hockey team, because he's got a hockey mask as well. I think it was his college hockey team. And these four guys were members of the hockey team. Um, yeah, I can't remember now. It was just one of them or all of them working together. I can't remember. There was a couple of people being Wild Dog. I can't remember now. But anyway, he's in the TV series as well. He's been in Arrow recently, uh, where he's just played by one guy. Like Metamorpho, of course, Rex Mason, cool character, been around for a long time. Valor, or Valor. <laughs> Pretty sure we spell it for you in the UK, like we do with most things, tend to have a U in it. Valor, like Honor. Oh. Uh, versus Lobo. Unfortunate weakness against lead, didn't he, old uh, Valor? Like all Daxamites have. Similar powers to Superman, but with a more uh, plentiful uh, weakness. So, like, Superman is weak to kryptonite, which you don't get an awful lot of. Whereas, uh, Valor and all Daxamites are weakness to lead, which is uh, not exactly super rare. Daxam devastated. Oh, is that our hero? Not looking in a good way there, but that is him. Don't think so, he had no cloak. Hmm. Is it a different version of him, maybe? You never know with the Legionnaires. There's all kind of time travel shenanigans that goes on with the Legionnaires, isn't it? 19... 20, 
one, twenty-two. End of an era. Oh, nice bloody stain on that one. I thought I'd be eating McGinnell off that one. Jesus Christ, that's a right messy one, that is. Yeah. <laughs> Got a run of Black Condor. First thrill packed issue, beginning an all new legend. Of course, he was a uh, member of is it the Freedom um, Force, isn't that Freedom Force? That's uh, somebody completely different Freedom Force, isn't it? Uh, the Freedom Fighters, I think it's the Freedom Fighters. At least, yeah, one version of him was a member of the Freedom Fighters anyway. This is a more modern version from 93, but the original Freedom Fighters were um, wartime, weren't they? Under Uncle Sam, I believe. So I'm not getting myself confused. All right, so there's 12 issues of Black Condor. Uh, this is poor old Firebrand. He only had about eight issues or something. And then he got killed in a single panel in Justice Society of America. Uh, in the... Um, like, a, I think her name was Roulette. And she like basically staged mortal combats between mind-controlled superheroes uh, to the death most of the time. And yeah, so he got killed by a checkmate agent. Uh, fine. So it just, just annoyed me. Because like, I read his comic, I liked his comic. It just annoys me. You know, some, you know, so this, this could be someone's first comic book they ever bought. You just picture this as like a kid bought this. It's his first comic he's ever bought and he really likes the character. The character disappears. Next time he sees it, it's being killed in a single panel, like just like a totally throwaway kind of death, you know, just gets on my nerves, that does. <laughs> anyway, so it's nine issues of Firebrand, that's all there was. Right, okay, my Eclipso annuals now. The New Titans, Flash, Superman in Action Comics, The Adventures of Superman. Hulk World. I think it's best to um, to put these with the actual comics. I'm not too sure. I think I must have my Eclipse comics in here as well, actually. Let's just see. Right, uh, Deathstroke the Terminator. Batman. Robin. Justice League America. Justice League Europe. Wonder Woman, Diana Eclipsed. And we have uh, the Many Faces of Evo, Evo, Evil, Eclipso Special, Part 2. So why haven't I got Part 1? That's annoying. Tell me I didn't get Part 1 of that bloody thing. That's a, that is a pain. Right, and then I've got my run of Eclipso. I think these immediately followed from the annuals. Yes, he was an evil sod. He is an evil sod. He also has these black diamonds that make people do evil things. Um, he's got like his uh, his enemies. I kind of like. I think he was possessed by him, and I, I kind of think he houses him at some points, like a bit like Electrogan, the demon. It's uh, Bruce Gordon. He's a solar scientist or something, and uh, the sun drives away Eclipso. So the sun's quite important in this in the story. Right, this isn't, didn't run for too long. London, 12th of Feb, 1891, The Vengeance Begins. Okay. Yeah, he's like a precursor to the Spectre Eclipse. So he's what he, that's what it was um, decided. He's like, whereas um, Eclipse is God's vengeance or whatever. Uh, so... Spectre is God's vengeance. I think Eclipso was like God's wrath or something like that. Right, anyway, so Bruce Gordon manages to get a team together. I've mentioned this a lot of time in my videos. Managed to get a team together to go to Power Door where Eclipso has like set up his kingdom kind of thing. He's usurped the country as his own domain. So um, Bruce Gordon gets a team together. Creeper, uh, Peacemaker. Um, not too sure who the other guys are. Captain, um, sorry, um, Doctor Midnight, uh, Manhunter, 
Uh, that's Chunk, I think, from Flash. Uh, Commander Steel is that one? Then who's that guy there? He looks a bit like Commander Steel himself. I'm not too sure. What is one called Steel? The other one's called Commander Steel. I'm not too sure. Or is it? It's not. It's not Starman, is it? Not Starman, but the um, Star Spangled Kid, whatever he was called, but older. I'm not too sure. But anyway, they all go to Eclipso, and they all get killed. <laughs> Basically, united they stand, divided they fall. They get eaten by uh, eclipsed uh, jaguars or something. I actually had to look at that because I always forget if it's jaguars or hyenas. Who is it that, that kills them? There you go, there's like a page at the back here. Not though the soldier knew someone had blundered. There's not to reason why, there's but to do and die. Into the valley of death rode the 600. It's a quote from Alfred Lord Tennyson's The Charge of the Light Brigade. And here's like all the heroes that went in. And then you've got post-mortem here. Well, it's happened. The shadow fighters have fallen. The creeper, major victory, peacemaker, Dr. Midnight, wildcat, commander still, and manhunter, all dead. Eclipso is victorious. In memory of these valiant heroes, let's spend a few moments in silence to honour our fallen comrades. Yeah, so they all got killed. Let me just show, I'm sure that trying to work out. Oh, Amanda Wallaby looks like he was in charge of the situation. Where is the. I remember there being some eclipsed hyenas or jackals or something. Yeah, Creeper come back to life because of his healing factor. Oh, eclipsed hyenas, there you go. A pack of eclipsed hyenas. Yeah, I think he got eaten. A down boy, heal. <laughs> oh god, good hyenas. <laughs> yeah, so Creeper gets eaten by hyenas basically, but the bits that they are not eaten reheal themselves. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, with his, uh, his powers. Right. <clears throat> so that was quite a. Uh, <laughs> quite a dark day in superhero-dom. <laughs> but that was kind of like a. That was DC showing their hand of like, this is what we do with characters I haven't even used for a while. We gather them together so they can be killed off by a, by a villain, you know, to prove the villain's worth. So that's what they did there. <clears throat> and that's what they tend to do well, a lot. Okay, some War of the Gods related stuff. One and two of War of the Gods. Three and four. Collector's edition, three mini posters inside. I wonder if I've still got the three mini posters. Yeah, there you go. Troya. Flash, Black Adam. Superman. A couple of War of the Gods tie overs. These have got scuff. These got folded over in the box, unfortunately. So they have a massive curve in them. <laughs> Oopsie daisy, that's all I can say. Uh, right, so Wonder Woman, 58. Atlas Shrugged. And Animal Man, number 40, War of the Gods. These are obviously ones that I won't collect in the, the series of. So they're just I just put them in with the, the main War of the Gods books. Well, I don't have a great deal of Crisis on Infinite Earth, so I knew that because uh, I wasn't really collecting them quite at that time. Uh, just before I started collecting the comics, really. Uh, I've also got number 8. The final fate of Flash. Is this the one where he dies? It's probably a key if it is. Uh, number nine. Wow, George Perez did covers, didn't he? Uh, ten. That's it. Well, interestingly, I've got some Blue Devils in here. Because they're Christ, cross, Crisis crossovers, but I've already got the full run of Blue Devil. <laughs> so now it appears I have a couple of extra uh, Blue Devils, just because they were Crisis crossovers, I stuck them in with that. I must have had them, like, pick them up, and then later on I ended up buying the full run of Blue Devil. Um, there's another Wonder Woman uh, Crisis crossover. Uh, Superman and Supergirl from DC Presents as a Crisis crossover. Uh, this must be a double as well, because I've got the All-Star Squadron. 
Now this is a 50th special. Uh, Justice League of America Crisis crossover. So yeah, they were kept in together. Right, the Armageddon 2001 storyline introducing Wave Rider. Second print apparently that one. It says here second print anyway. Don't know why I got second print. I don't know. Right, uh, special number two, Armageddon 2001. At last, the shocking identity of Monarch revealed. Because all the annuals that year were about um, Wave Rider coming back from the future to try and work out who was going to become Monarch. This uh, terrible um, tyrant from the future. Uh, yeah, so he visited everybody, he used his, his tachyon powers to try and work out what their futures were going to present. Uh, he didn't actually see all the proper timelines though, because he only saw different you know, possible timelines. So he comes back to Hulk and Dove and looked at them in the future, and it didn't show. It didn't show a Hulk killing Dove after Monarch came back in. No, Monarch comes back in time, kills Dove, and Hulk kills Monarch and becomes Monarch. Yeah, that was the story. <laughs> right, Legion 2000. Well, 01. Yeah, Adventures of Superman Annual Number Three. Superman Action Comics Annual Number Three, Hawk World Annual Number Two, the Justice League of America Annual Number Five, Superman Annual Number Three, and this was followed by a mini series, Armageddon Inferno. It's got some Mandrake art according to the cover there. That first one did anyway. Right, it's got a wave rider on it, so I'm assuming some kind of time spanning shenanigans. Right, then we had Armageddon, the alien agenda. I think in this one, it's got Captain Atom uh, traveling around in time, fighting monarch Hank Hall, uh, which is a bit of a... Uh, funny thing because originally Monarch was going to be Captain Atom they was going to make Captain Atom become Monarch before they changed it to Hank Hall there you are so there was a little four part of there I think originally I think Monarch become extant later on didn't he and then he got killed by being beamed onto a, a crashing plane in some kind of time travelling shenanigans uh, right DC 1 million well I've got a few I didn't realise I had a few action, a few comics from the One Million series as well, rather than putting them with the proper triangle numbers. I've put them in, mind you, this one hasn't got a triangle number on it, so was this after the triangle number period? Oh look, it's a, it's a ha. Ha. No, what's ha? There's an A-H, isn't there, which is a sign, uh, somebody's signature, but I'm not sure ha is. <laughs> H-A, unless it's just him doing his own name backwards. Oh, I can't bother to look. <laughs> uh... Adam Hughes does A-H, doesn't he? And does Ha. Right, uh, another DC 1 million. I've done a two of DC 1 million. A Superman, Man of Steel. 1 million. Just plain old Superman, 1 million. We've got 1 million number three. Uh, the Adventures of Superman, 1 million. Superman, Man of Tomorrow, one million. <laughs> and then we've got one million, number four. All right, then we have Genesis, the source of all power, doomed. I think this is some source wall kind of shenanigans going on here. The new gods and apocalypse and uh, dark side and the like. So four issues of Genesis. They've got a couple of Genesis comics uh, the power of Shazam if thy gods forsake thee Jack Kirby's fourth world Lobo surfing the god wave <laughs> right now most of my bloodlines annuals are in here as well now, I'm not too sure if I should keep it like this or whether I should put the annuals in with their respective books be a bit of a bloody job to do that now actually um, anyway, let's just go through these bloodline annuals. Uh, Man of Steel, number two annual. 
Shadow of the Bat, the annual number one. Flash annual, of course, each of these introduced a new character. Most of them were actually killed off by now. I've been going, I've mentioned that a lot actually. So Lobo had this woman, I think. Can't remember what her name was at all. That she's ever featured again. This one was a villain. Can't remember what his name was. Spike, Fawn, Edge, maybe. Uh, Joe Public, I think his name was. This guy, never to be seen again, I don't think. Not even brought back to kill off, I don't think. <laughs> Argus, this one's called Argus. Yeah, he strikes from the shadows, Argus. He had a four book run as well, I believe. I'm not sure if they've killed him off or not on, in this, on this guy. Uh, Ballistic, possibly been killed off, I'm not too sure though. Lionheart, I think he's one of those ones that never was seen again. Myriad, can't say I remember Myriad. Is that her? Oh, she wasn't the one who... No. I think there was one... Someone was killed by Lex Luthor, wasn't they? And, uh But then the aliens... Yeah, oh, did, was she killed and then the alien bit her when she was dead and then she came back to life? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure there was someone that Lex Luthor did something bad to. Uh, Anima, she had a run of about two years. It wasn't that good a run, to be honest. It's a bit boring. I wasn't... I didn't... Like, I collected it because I just wanted to get all the... All the Bloodlines characters. But yeah, it wasn't that interesting. And then she got killed. She was cut in two by a closing dimensional portal. So it closed, she was halfway through it. So that was a nice a nice ending for a poor character. Um, Nightblade. <laughs> yeah. Two characters in this one. Cardinal Sin and Samaritan. With the new Batman caught in the middle. Of course, he's as Bat there. The Eclipso Annual, got Prism. Oh look, there's an eclipsed uh, Parasite as well. Parasite was eclipsed, but luckily Prism's got like a uh, light refracting powers and obviously light, especially sunlight, is uh, Eclipso's weakness, isn't it? Teen Titans Annual, they had a character called Chimera. Uh, Death Storm, where parasites rule hell well. That's Legion 93. Uh, Gunfire, yeah, in Deathstroke Terminal. He had about 14 issues of his own story. I think he might have been killed now. Yeah, I think he was just killed recently in the Heroes in Crisis story. I remember seeing his body. Sparks will fly. He calls himself Mongrel. Don't anybody else try. Jam, it's a bit of a wanky character, part of my language. Introducing Jam, he's prodigious, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's an annoying twat, I suspect. <laughs> All right, um, Razor Sharp, that's what I was like. Uh, yeah, she was a bit, she had rubbish powers. She turned her arm into massive blades. It's like, oh, that's really handy. <laughs> I, I jest, it's not handy at all. Right, Terra Smith. Right, Loose Cannon, he had, um, I think, a four issue run. I think this one's called Geist. Seems to be called this one, it might be called Geist. He could become invisible a bit. <laughs> yeah, nothing to write home about character. Strength wise. Okay, Blood Bath Part 1 of 2, where bloodlines end. And then Blood Bath Part 2 of 2. So basically, there was, they were taking the um, spinal fluid, feasting on the spinal fluid of, of humans, and certain ones who had the metagene would, would gain powers. They either became super villains or superheroes. Um, but they were trying to, they were gathering it all to, to, to summon like a, an ultimate beast of some sort, uh, give birth to some, I don't know, entity. And obviously the, the heroes, including the new heroes, end up kicking the, the monster's butt. Because that's what heroes do. Right, then a few of the guys from Bloodlines started off this blood pack. And they had a four-issue miniseries. That's as far as they got with trying to you know, keep the characters going. <laughs> all right, we've made all these new characters, what should we do with them? I know, why not a four issue mini series? This is really pretty rubbish. Oh yeah, we'll do that, that's a good idea. So that's what they did. <laughs> Fantastic. 
I say most of them have been killed off. The ones that haven't been completely ignored have been killed off by now, I'm sure. But I was looking at this and I was like, why is this starting? Why is this? Why have I only got number four? But I realised this must have been a countdown one because it's going to zero hour, isn't it? Uh, I'm assuming so. September 94. This is September 94 as well. So it's four, three, two. They will actually come out the same month. They will come out in September 94. One. But I'm pretty sure you, you, you count down. Otherwise, I wouldn't have put it in that way, I don't think. And then zero, look, here we go. So yeah, all came out the same month. Interesting, must have done it by week by week basis, maybe. All right, and I've put a few of the zeros in here, actually. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. Somehow I must have thought it was a good idea. So zero hour for damage, zero hour for Lobo, zero hour for Manhunt. Now I've got a feeling I've got a few of these. <laughs> oh. Zero hour eyes only top secret. Okay. Don't remember seeing this. Uh, zero month, the beginning of tomorrow, a sampler. Okay. Interesting. All right. Underworld Unleashed. Another annual event. Neuron, I think it was. Offered um, in exchange for people's souls, he offered to give them extra power to boost their power. Uh, yeah. There you go, three parts of that. Uh, Patterns of Fear, Underworld Unleashed. The Ultimate Temptation of Oracle. And a couple of uh, Underworld tie-ins. Apocalypse, Dark Uprising. Underworld Unleashed. Uh, Manhunter again. Manhunter is dead, long live Manhunter. Because there's been, a, there's been about five Manhunters so far, not including the blinking Manhunters of, you know, the, uh, the Manhunters. <laughs> By number 18 of uh, damage. Now, I'm sure I went through my damage comics before. Were these gaps then? Did I have gaps in it because I put them all in, into, you know, into this box instead? That's something for me to try and work out. God, it's going to be a right nightmare. My upstairs room, I think I'm going to have to try and clean up my upstairs room, get it all cleared out so I can put long boxes where they're more easily accessible. I might throw out my old computer desk that I haven't used for ages with a computer on it and see if I can, I don't know, work some kind of system there where I can get access to my comics a lot easier. Uh, well, well, I mean, I see some people's videos where they're doing that and they've got like drawers for their stuff and it's like, oh, that looks so good. <laughs> Why can't I have that? <laughs> well, like, the answer is I can have it, but it's going to cost me time and money. Then we'll have to see how that goes. Right, Parallax Emerald Knight. So this is when Hal uses his powers to reignite the sun, to save the world, and dies in the process, but comes back as Spectre. Right, now the first crossover that I remember buying, I think I got most of it, Millennium, this is when I just started comics properly, 1988, around about that time, so this is the first major, and again this was uh, to create characters, I think they became the New Guardians, was it they were called in the end, they lasted for about a year, and then you pretty much never saw them ever again, I can't remember if they were killed off or what, but you kind of... Um, <coughs> Oh, so looking at this, I've even got, I've even got like, um, yeah. So are these all missing from my runs? I've got week one, then I've got the, the, the comics from week one. So Wonder Woman, week one. Justice League International, week one. Flash, week one. Then we've got Millennium, week two. Then we've got Young All Stars. I've probably got two of those now. Superman, Millennium, week two. Legion of Superheroes, week two. I think she might be a Manhunter. I could be wrong. Well, Laurel, are you finally going to tell us your secret? No man escapes the Manhunters. No! Uh, right, Secret Origins starring the Manhunters from Millennium Week 2. Then we have Millennium Week 3. Bloody bent over there. That's annoying. That's really bad putting away of comics there, wasn't it? Gee, good job, Grey. Right, uh, Adventures of Superman from Millennium Week 3. Green Lantern Corp Core from Millennium Week 3. Then we have Millennium Week 4, The Choice with Madame Xanadu there on the front. Uh, Suicide Squad 
from week four. An action comics from week four. A Teen Titans spotlight on Aqualad from week four. Then we move on to Millennium week five. The teaching. We have a Wonder Woman. Challenge of the Gods. A Justice League International. And Flash again from week five. The Chunk. Okay, Millennium week six. A Secret Origins. Starring the Floronic Man and the Guardians of the Universe. There's Floronic Man, they decided that he was one of the new Guardians, didn't they? And like he's back to being a, a villain now anyway. Uh, Superman. The Young All-Stars. Right, Millennium Week 7. Uh, Infinity Inc. I'm pretty sure I've got a full run of Infinity Inc. in another box. One of my earliest videos was going through that. Yeah. <laughs> so I must have some doubles, like, but I've got like one in the run where it came with the crossover and one with the run where in the in the... The original comic run, like Booster Gold. I'm sure I went for my Booster Golds recently. I'm, I'm pretty sure this must have been in there. All right, Green Lantern Corpse again, Core again. All right, Millennium Week 8. I think it was an eight week thing. Got a Teen Titans Spotlight on Starfire, guest starring Haringer. Okay, Invasion, the Alien Alliance. Who can forget that time when the Dominators tried to take over the Earth? And we have Week 2, Battleground Earth. Week 2 of Invasion. I think they did this as um, on the Arrow, didn't they? Arrow, Supergirl and Flash on the um, CW network. I think they did the Invasion angle, didn't they, with the Dominators? I'm sure, uh, yeah, I'm sure they did that as a three-part crossover. Born during the invasion, they are the Blasters Special. I do not remember them at all. The Blasters. Peter David wrote it. I don't remember them being called Blasters. <laughs> Needless to say, DC must have killed them off pretty quickly, or even that they just went into complete obscurity within minutes of being created. Right, now this next bit just says action and I am pretty, pretty sure I have all these already. <laughs> In fact, I think I've got, I may have them three times now. Or no, maybe this is where they, maybe I didn't see them before and now I'm seeing them for the first time here. Because I, I picked up a Superman lot recently and these are in there, because I didn't realise that Action Comics Weekly was actually action. You know, Superman action, because after a while, I think when they gave him his own title, or another title rather, they made Action Comics Weekly back into the old, like, four or five story kind of format. And I picked this up because it had Wild Dog in it, who I always liked. Um, I don't know if I've got these, I know I've got them at least double. I hope I haven't got them as a triple. Um, well, needless to say, I have some doubles to shift. Showdown for Wild Dog. Dead Man Under Glass. Superman, a god. Secret Six behind enemy lines. Green Lantern, the Lone Guardian. Black Canary, premiere in this week. She burnt the old costume. I don't think people like that costume, obviously, because she's burning it. So I think that's uh, she's gone back to the classic uh, look. The new Secret Six revealed. Someone was telling me, I think Daz was saying, that there was a there was a um, Secret Six, possibly a TV show or something like that. You never know with these things. You see them, we see them, but don't hold your breath waiting. Wild Dog, <laughs> with a pack of dogs accompanying him for some reason. Don't ask me why, I'm sure there was a story reason behind it. Black Hawk. He's a very old character, Black Hawk, isn't he? He's been going for a long time. I'm sure he goes back to like the 30s or 40s.
Nightwing and Speedy on the prowl. The resurrection of Dead Man. I'm pretty sure he's not been resurrected. He's dead. He's still dead. Oh no, Torn! Torn! Little Torn corner there. All right. Black Hawk again. Some of the cellar tape on these have got a little bit sticky. Green Lantern cleans up. Maybe that's another job that I might get around to doing someday. Rebagging everything. A lot of my comics are bagged in batches as well. I don't put one comic per bag. I've quite a few up. I think I've got six in a bag. They're quite a big bags, some of them. So maybe I'll put them one individually. But the trouble is, you do that, you have a lot less room in your boxes to put your comics in. And I've got enough bloody boxes as it is. Uh, yeah, so we'll have to see. <laughs> we'll have to see how much I can be bothered to do. Right, nearly at the end now. Beware my power, Green Lantern's light. The Crash of 88. Phantom Lady. Wild Dog or Demon popped up as well for a while. Another good reason for me to have picked these up. So here we go. Classic Demon. Yava Demonicus Etragan. Now is that actually a Kirby picture? Yeah, it's signed down here. Jack Kirby and Justin is that? Or Austin? Oslin? <laughs> right. Phantom Lady. Wow, how have they ever got away with that costume? That just doesn't make any sense. It's impossible for that costume to stay on. Totally impossible. Wow. Woo! Hmm. <laughs> yes. Right, 641. Superman narrowly saving that train. And then lastly, 642. If Hal Jordan dies. Who will be the next Green Lantern? Uh, I don't think he dies in this one because he doesn't die till Final Night, as we know. And this is a lot earlier than Final Night. But obviously, he was in a bit of trouble in, the, in this story. And yeah, okay, that's it. That's the whole of that box. That's not quite the whole of my collection. I've got one more box uh, of like uh, odds and sods stuff that I could probably put straight up for sale, actually, or trade or whatever. It's stuff like, yeah, why have I still got this? Why didn't I get rid of this years ago? And also, I've got two little boxes in a cu another cupboard that I can be going through as well. So I shall do that. Anyway, when I can get to them, actually, this, the, the whole of that corner of the room is all blocked off. So, rubbish. But we'll see what happens anyway. Cheers for watching. Bye.